Hello, my name is Michelle and I'm a personal trainer and yoga teacher in the Boston area. And I also specialize in prenatal and postnatal yoga. And in this video, I'm going to share a little prenatal practice for the mamas out there. Um, as always, listen to your body. I'll be giving options, uh, but always do what's best for you. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to find our way into a nice seated position. And I forgot to mention, it is nice to have a yoga block handy. If you don't have a yoga block, you can get kind of creative with some things around your home. So as you find your way into a comfortable seat of your choice, just take a moment to lengthen up through your spine. Draw one hand to your heart, one hand onto your belly, and allow your eyes to soften. Take a deep inhale through the nose and a slow, long exhale out your mouth. Just letting go of your day. Allowing yourself just to shift that awareness inward, feeling that connection to your true self, to your body, and to your baby. And we'll begin to connect to our core through our breathing practice, our pranayama practice. So let's slide our hands down towards our ribs, just wrapping the hands around the sides of the body to get that tactile feel for the breath and for the movement of the breath in your body. Take a deep inhale through the nose and feel the size of the body expanding out and in. And as you breathe in, you feel the ribs moving towards out towards the side of the room. And as you exhale, you can start to engage the deeper core muscles, the transverse abdominus muscles, and start to hug those belly muscles in, like you're giving your baby a good hug. And then shift your hand so one hand is in the front, one hand is back behind you. And feel the breath move. Big inhale, you can feel that expansion now forward and back. And then that nice full exhalation, gently hogging and the belly muscles in towards your baby. And lastly, we'll take the hands down to the lower belly and down, down towards the creases of the hips. And I want you to really feel the activation and the lift as you exhale, the belly hugging up and in. So I often get that question, like how do I engage my core when I'm pregnant? How do I engage my core safely? And what exercises can I do? And we always wanna start off by really thinking of that deepest layer of the transverse abdominus like a corset muscle that wraps around the body. And I want you to feel how you can actively hug those muscles in. You're gonna feel that activity as you exhale. That's where it's most obvious, the hugging in. And then can you keep that hugging in of the muscles as you inhale? So you might feel the breath more in the upper chest area as you continue to create that hogging in. And feel free to continue to move the hands around so you feel that active, that activity of the muscles. Because everything can feel really different. You know, with baby growing, even when the baby's really small, you can feel how things are already shifting around. Organs are shifting around, babies growing and changing positions. And so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna relax. Just let your hands come to your knees and then just soften the belly. So it's as, as important to 
take time to be aware of relaxing the muscles as it is to engage and connect with the core muscles hugging in. All right, so I'll be talking about that as we start to move. Let's shift forward towards our hands and knees, coming into a tabletop position. Spread your fingers nice and wide, line your shoulders up over your wrist and your knees underneath your hips. As you exhale, round your spine, tuck your tail, tuck your chin, and push the floor away. Inhale, come into a nice sway back. I'll let the elbows slightly bend. As you exhale, round. You can, again, feel the hugging of the belly, lifting the baby towards the back of your body. All right, see if you can keep that hugging in, even as you shift into that little sway back out. Right, and with your sway back out, don't come in as deep as you normally do, right? I want you to think of keeping the front of the body hugging in more rather than opening and stretching the front of the body. And you'll feel this is gonna feel better for your back as well. You won't feel any of that tension. You don't wanna feel tension in the low back. And now we're gonna to come towards a flat back. So the back is like a tabletop. And this means you really have to create that hugging in of your belly muscles as you push the floor away. Now go ahead and start to bring your right knee out towards the side. You can extend that right leg out nice and long. And you wanna have your right foot in line with your left knee. On an inhale, reach your right arm up and reach up, looking up towards your right hand. Start to circle sweep your fingertips towards the front of your mat, slowly lower the hand down and then out and around. Let's do that a few more times, just following your breath. Slow inhale as you circle it up. Slow exhale as you lower down. One more time, big inhale, reach it up. Place your hand back underneath your shoulder. And then we'll spin the right toes out to the side, slide your right foot in. So we have this nice 90 degree angle with the leg. And you're gonna take your right hand to your right thigh, just by your knee and then push the leg away. I'll rock a little side to side. I want you to create extension through the spine and you'll feel more opening around that right SI joint, that right hip. So again, push your hand into your thigh, but I also want you to squeeze your thigh back into your hand so you're creating a little bit of that a resistance. Push and pull. Last little movement, we'll come up to the knee. As you come up to your knee, try to pull those hips underneath you so your tail is reaching down towards the floor. Reach your left arm out, turn your gaze towards your left hand, turn your palm up and reach the left arm up, up and over, getting a nice side body stretch. My gaze can go wherever it feels comfortable. You might explore looking down, maybe explore looking up, pulling that left shoulder back, Big breath into the side body here, creating a little bit more space for baby to grow. And then we'll inhale, come back through the center, arms reaching out to a big T shape. Gaze goes back over to your left hand and you're gonna slowly tip, nice and slow and controlled, lowering your left hand directly under your shoulder. And then extend your right leg out nice and long again. Press all the way down to the edge of the pinky toe as you stretch your right fingertips over. Turn your gaze up, look down your arm to your hand, and turn the palm down towards the ground. All right, feel that nice stretch from fingertip to your pinky toe, pressing to the floor. And then as you exhale, you're gonna lift the arm and lift the leg coming into that balance here. Squeeze the waistline. You can look down towards your foot and then reach. Stretch, exhale, squeeze. Inhale, reach. And exhale, squeeze. Inhale, reach. One more time, exhale, squeeze. And inhale, reach. Expand and circle, sweep your hands forward. Hands come underneath your shoulders. Knees can come back underneath your hip. Let's curl the toes under and find our first downward facing dog pose. Take a moment to look back at your feet. Normally, we have our feet about hip width apart, but it has baby growth. So you're gonna take up more space and sit your feet a little bit wider. This is also gonna pre provide a little bit more space for you to send your belly back between your thighs to really start to 
glutes, bend the knees and tilt the tail high, push the floor away, start to straighten those arms nice and long, and pedal the heels, shift the hips, whatever your body needs. Just feel that subtle shift, the weight of your baby releasing from your pelvic floor, from your bladder. Last little pedal here, and then we'll slowly, slowly lower our knees down towards the floor. And now we're going to come into a child's pose. Let the knees come about mat width apart. Draw your big toes together. Sink your hips back towards your heels and release your forehead down towards the ground. Allow the belly to soften here. Soften so much that you feel the weight of the baby really releasing from the low back. So you can feel how good child's pose can be just to release with gravity, the weight of the baby away from your low back, away from the hips, that area that can sometimes be a little bit achy and tender at the end of the day. So doing a little child's pose can really help a lot. Let's go ahead and come back up to our hands and knees. We're gonna do the second side. So find your tabletop first. Now we re-engage the abdominal muscles in hugging your belly towards your back of your body, hugging your baby towards the back of the body. We'll bring the left knee towards the side, extend the left leg out, making sure that left foot is in line with your right knee, and then reach your left arm up. Reach up, look up, and then circle sweep the hip forward, like you're doing a big swim stroke here. This really helps with that nice mobility and the spine, mobility in the shoulder joint. Let your gaze follow your hand, one more big circle. And then we'll place the hand back underneath your shoulder. Pivot those left toes to the side, slide that left heel in so it's in line with your right knee. Take your, right, your left hand to your thigh and then we'll rock a little side to side. Now allow yourself to really get curious noticing how this side feels. Remember to create that resistance, that pushing your hand into your thigh as your thigh hugs back into your hand. Let's slow that movement down. Come up onto the knee, pull that tail underneath you. Reach your right arm out, palm faces up. Gaze us to that right hand as you reach it up, up and over. You might even lower your left elbow towards your knee or you could keep your hand on your thigh, whatever feels best for you. And then again, just taking some nice deep breath, trying to lean that right shoulder back behind you. And then inhale, open up nice and wide, arms long. Stretching those arms out wide, gaze to your right hand, lower your right hand under your right shoulder. Extend that left leg out, press the pinky toe to the floor. Extend that left arm over, so you're creating that big diagonal line. Try not to let your butt stick back, but really pull those hips forward, like you're pushing your hips towards the wall in front of you, and you're pulling the tailbone underneath you, like you're reaching your tail towards your left foot. Now as you in, as you exhale, you'll lift the leg, lift the hand, squeezing this waistline together, flex your ankle, and then stretch and reach. Inhale, like you're stretching taffy. Exhale, squeeze, hug those belly muscles in. So we're really starting to create some stability around the hip joint here. Now if this bothers your pubic bone, I didn't mention this before, you can always keep your foot just resting or placed on the floor. All right, last one. We come to that big stretch. We hold the stretch, we love and explore the stretch, and then we'll slowly release it, bringing those hands forward, knee underneath your hip, curl your toes under, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Just pedal those heels around, shift your hips around. And now we're gonna come up onto the toes. You're gonna round your spine forward, coming towards a plank position and then as you exhale you're gonna bend the knees tilt the tail press back into that down dog just slide that belly right between your thighs coming up onto the toes round forward like a cat to a plank and then exhale bend the knee hips back right use that control of the core creating a sense of lightness hovering hugging the belly to the back of the body 
bend the knees, tilt the tail back to your downward facing dog. Let's stay in downward facing dog. Nice work. And then we're going to lower down to our knees. And then lower the elbows right underneath your shoulders. Grabbing onto your biceps, let your head come down to the ground. Hips stay right over your knees. You might even walk your knees a little bit wider to create space. And then rock your hips side to side, like you're wagging your tail. And as you wag your tail, you start to soften all those muscles down along the front of your belly, sides of your belly. Right, so we're relaxing those belly muscles. This is called puppy pose, or sometimes in birthing classes, they'll call it polar bear pose. And again, we're just simply using gravity. And this can be a great position to come into, particularly during your labor, right? When you're having a contraction. When the contraction, you're gonna feel some of the pressure of the baby pushing down into your pelvic floor. And oftentimes you'll feel a lot of uh, pressure down into your low back. So we're just, again, using the gravity to release that pressure, try to soften those muscles, and just allow the baby to, you know, go on it long its journey. And then once the contraction's over, a lot of that pressure is alleviated, and you feel normal again. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and get ready for your downward facing dog pose. And in this dog, down dog, take the feet wide. Think about taking the feet about as wide as your sticky mat is and let the toes just slightly turn out. You'll feel a slightly different stretch along the back of the legs. Enjoy that for a moment. And then slowly walk your hands back towards your feet till you come into a ragdoll forward fold. Options here, you might let your fingertips rest to the floor. Some of you will like to grab for opposite elbows and others might prefer bringing your elbows up to your knees in lifting your head a little higher than your heart. Sometimes that feels better if you're feeling nauseous or heartburn or sometimes even feeling a little bit dizzy. You know, those things are pretty common. So just taking a moment just to feel your feet. Rock a little forward, rock a little back. Try to relax here and release, wiggle your hips. All right, now we feel into the body. We get ready to come up to standing nice and slow. We're all gonna bend our knees, taking our hands up to the knees coming into a bit of a squat here. Pelvic tilt as you tuck the tail and then tilt the tail. Do that a few more times, really focusing on the movement in the pelvis, tilting and tucking. And feel that movement in your back. Try to stay within a range that feels good, so no junkiness in the lower back. Comfort. Last one, you're going to tuck the tail, press down through your feet and slowly roll all the way up to your shoulders and head come up last. Do a few shoulder rolls, step your feet underneath you and find your way towards the front of your mat. Feet are going to be, uh, again, a little wider than hips width apart. We're going to come into like a traditional squat here. Squats are really good for strengthening uh, the glutes and all the muscles that support the, the loose ligaments and joints around our hips and our core. All right, so feet hip width apart. We're gonna come into the squat. We're gonna hold it first. So think of reaching your hips back. Arms are gonna reach for to really remind you to keep your chest lifted, your gaze right out in front of you, and you're hugging those belly muscles up and in. So like you're hugging your baby towards your back. You can even take your hands here as long as you keep your chest lifted. Now as you stand up, stand up, squeeze your glutes, pulling those hips right under your ribs, and then we'll go back into it. Inhale and exhale to stand. Take a moment to find your rhythm. Start to explore that range of movement, getting your hips way back. Try to see, can you get your hips to about knee level? But do your best, do what works best for your body. You don't need to go any lower than that. Pressing down through all four corners of your feet. Try not to let the toes lift. The tippy toes can lift, but really keeping the feet grounded. Last one, we'll come into the squat. Hold your squat, right? Remember, pull that belly up and in. Release your hands down towards the floor. You're gonna step your right foot back. 
Are you going to come into your long, low lunge? You can lower your right knee to the floor. You know, an option here, you can keep your hands on the ground or you can bring the block towards the inside of your leg. All right, and just taking a moment to release the front of the hips. All right, tend to get really tight in those hip flexors. You want to make sure that your left knee is right over your heel and you want to lift your chest, lift your gaze in front of you. All right, let's curl the back toes under. Slowly lift that knee up so the hips are a little bit lifted. And now you're going to straighten your front leg coming into a pyramid stretch. You can look back at your right foot. Changes are your right heel isn't going to touch. And that's a good thing. You want to keep get a good stretch that way. Those right toes point towards the front. You're pushing off the front foot. Get a good stretch to the front of the ankle. My ankles always get really tight. And now we'll just move with the breath. We're going to inhale, come back to your lunge. Exhale, hips up and back to your pyramid stretch, hamstring stretch. Inhale to your lunge and exhale. Nice. Just follow your breath. Feel your body. All right, we'll do one more. We're going to finish in our lunge, taking your hands down to the floor to the inside of that left foot. You're going to swing that left leg up and back, one-legged dog. If that doesn't feel good for your pelvis, keep your foot on the floor. Regular dog. Option here, you might bend your knee, letting your heel drop behind you. Keep plugging both hands evenly down to the floor, especially that left hand. Try not to let it get light. And then we'll slowly square the hips. We're going to step that left foot to the outside of your left hand. Warrior one, back heel pivots down toward the floor. Ground down through your feet. Inhale, sweep both arms up. So as you turn your shoulders and your hips forward, you keep reaching your knee over the center of the toes. Firming your right quad and feeling that opening through your right hip. Let's keep your right arm extended up and the left arm is going to come down by your side. Look over towards your left hand. Turn your thumb down. So the palm is facing back behind you. You're going to tuck your hand behind your back and try to see can you reach for your right hip, kind of wrapping your fingers around. And here you're going to really feel now where your hips are in space, right and left. You just do your best. It's never perfect squared hips because we don't have square hips. I'm not block people. <laughs> right? So lengthen down through the tail, lift up through the heart. And now start to reach your hand forward, creating this long diagonal line. Exhaling, releasing the arm down. Neck spine is long. Inhale, sweep it forward, rise up. Exhale, come forward, slowly lower down. Stay strong in the legs. That's where you're going to feel the fatigue. I can feel it myself. Inhale to come up. Exhale, long spine. Hug your belly in. Whole body. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Next inhale, you're going to reach your right hand straight ahead. Reach your left hand straight ahead like you're holding a little yoga block here. All right, and you're going to step your right foot to your squat. Feet wide, hips back and down. Stand back up again. Squeeze your glutes. Woo, we're going to go right back into it. Sitting those hips back and down, pressing through your feet. So I like to provide a little bit of challenge here because it's important to really feel strong here in your body. Moving slow, strong, and steady. Two more. Just even it back out with these squats. Last one, we're going to come into the squat. Hold it here. Release your hands down to the floor. Step your left foot back. Long, low lunge. You can lower that left knee to the floor. Option to pull that block under your shoulders for a little bit of height. Open that left hip. All right, so something to talk about. Everybody's different, right? And sometimes it's hard when you're watching a video because we're all dealing with different things in our body. Some of us are just naturally more flexible and others are not. And you know which one you will fall under, right? We all know our own body. And um, as speaking from the side of being a more flexible person naturally, which is probably why I loved yoga, um, 
I need to be more careful about stretching, especially during my pregnancy. You know, my joints and ligaments are more flexible. All right, let's go ahead and curl the back toes under, lift the back knee up. Let's find that hamstring stretch straight in your front leg. Look back at your back leg. Keep pushing off that front foot. Enjoy this stretch here. So coming back to that topic, right? So if you're more flexible, I want you to go only about 80% of your flexibility, right? Don't challenge your flexibility right now um, because you are more vulnerable for some of the injuries, right? And those of you who are not flexible, you can, you know, you can challenge yourself in flexibility, right? Obviously with mindfulness, always use that approach of mindfulness. All right, let's go ahead and let's move with the breath. Inhale to your lunge. Exhale to your pyramid stretch. Inhale to your lunge. Exhale. Last one, we'll finish in that lunge. Yeah, and we're gonna bring the hands down to the floor. Again, one-legged dog or four-legged dog, your choice. <laughs> Bend the knee, open your hips, push even through the hands. Big breath, big, big breath, and then we'll square those hips. You can straighten your right leg nice and long. Step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Set yourself up for warrior one, pivot your back heel grounding to the floor. Sweep both arms up. And up, get a wiggle around, find your feet. Start to turn your hips and shoulders forward. Your right knee is bent right over your heel, pointing out over the center of your toes, and your back heel is grounded. Your back leg is straight, and your quad is firm. All right, let's work the upper body. Let's lower that right hand. Look over to your right hand. Turn your thumb down. Tuck your hand back behind you. You're gonna feel how that really releases the neck and shoulders. And then you turn forward, you square the hips, lengthen down through your tail. Lift that low belly up and in. Now use that core as you come forward, long diagonal line. Exhaling as you release the arm down and back, you reach towards the back of the room. And then inhale, come forward, reach up. And exhale. Follow your breath, inhaling, just glide that arm by your ear, you lift your heart, keep the tail lengthening. Stay strong in the leg, keep that right knee right over your heel. Try not to let the shape of the legs change here. Upper body moves, the lower body stable and strong. All right, last one, we'll reach that left arm up. And we'll reach the left arm straight ahead. Reach the right arm straight ahead. Lift that back heel, bend the back knee. Step to that squat, Woo, feel those legs. And stand right on up. Woo, nice work, yeah, you can always feel those legs. Let's take an inhale, reach both arms up towards the sky. Interlace your fingers, slip your palms up, and a little wiggle side to side. Imagine you're getting taller and longer through each side of your body. Let the knees soften, you're gonna release the arms out to your sides. We're gonna reach your right arm back, like you're doing a little twist here, and then reach those arms up. Coming to your center, second side, left arm reaches back. You can follow your gaze down that left arm. Reach those arms up. Let's do that one more time to each side. Just letting the hips and the shoulders go with you. Whew. Keep your feet grounded. We finish with that left side, reach both arms up and then release those arms down. You can circle your wrists, open and close your fingers. All right, next sequence, we're gonna come into a chair squat. So it's a little bit narrower than that last squat, right? So feet about hip width apart, feet are parallel. You wanna have those toes pointing straight ahead and your knees in line. As you sit your hips back, it's more of a lightning bolt shape here. You don't have to go super low. You wanna keep the chest lifted, hugging the belly back and in. So lengthen down through the tail and lift the pubic bone up towards the navel and the navel hugging in towards your baby. All right, we're gonna take a big inhale. Exhaling, squeeze the shoulder blades together to come up, open the heart, open the chest. Inhale, sit those hips back, reach up, and stand up, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Inhale, and exhale. So as you pull those shoulders back and down, massaging all those little muscles along the back of the neck and shoulders, 
Last one, we're gonna come into that chair squat. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. We're gonna get light on the right foot. So shifting the weight into the left foot, lift the right heel up off the ground, come up onto that tippy toe. And then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna extend that leg way back behind you for a crescent lunge coming right on the ball of your foot. Keep that heel lifted and reach your arms up. It's okay if you need to bend that right knee a little bit. You wanna turn your hips and shoulders forward. So you wanna feel that pinky edge of your foot right wrapping right underneath the, the toes, right on the floor. All right, so you feel that lift, you feel the length. Now we'll open up to Warriors Two, pivoting your back heel to the floor, reaching your left knee over your toe, a lengthen down through the tail. See if you can pull that left sit bones underneath you, like you're reaching that left sit bone towards your right heel. Gazing out over your left fingertips, you're gonna lower your hand or option to lower your elbow. Whatever feels good for your side body here. You don't wanna feel crunched. And then you're gonna reach that right arm over, chin comes in towards your under armpit, right? And then as you reach your fingertips to the back of your mat, your gaze is gonna go down and your palm faces down. We're gonna release the neck, neck and shoulders here. Palm goes up, you reach to the front, gaze goes towards that left underarm, like you're giving it a little sniff, and then reach your fingertips back, gaze down towards the floor. Great, we'll reach it back forward one more time and reach it to the back. Keep it reaching back. Gaze goes down, so you're looking down at that foot. And now the thumb turns down, palm faces back behind you, you tuck your hand behind your back. Just like in Warrior One, you're gonna reach for that left crease of your hip. Keep peeling your right shoulder open. Inhale, reach your left arm forward. Keep lengthening down through your tail, opening up through your hip. Whew, feel those legs yet. Right, we're creating that stability and strength in the legs. Let's flip the palm up towards the sky. Let's straighten that left leg. Reach the left arm up and back. Get a good stretch. In preparation for triangle pose, you're gonna lower your left hand down first. I want you to be very light on your fingertips as you slide your hand down. Keep that right shoulder over. Option here, if your balance is strong, you can look up. If it's not feeling there today, you can look down. This also helps you know, if you're feeling nauseous, dizzy, any of those unpleasant things, keep your gaze low. Great, pressing down through your feet as you squeeze and hug them back in towards one another. Great. Inhale back to your warrior two, reach that left hand forward. You can release the right arm out. <laughs> Releasing that shoulder, let's go ahead and reach your hand back towards the front of the mat, pivot onto the ball of your foot. Hands to your heart, you're gonna lean forward a little bit to counter that balance and step into that chair squat. Ground through your feet, stand up, reach up. Big inhale, exhale, elbows wide, squeeze the shoulder blades together, reach those arms up. Now we'll stand up, squeeze the shoulder blades together. <laughs> Had to get my rhythm in there. Inhale, sit, reach, exhale, stand and squeeze. Really press down through the big toe, the pinky toe, and right down through those heels, plugging them into the earth. Last one, we come into this chair squat. Hands to your heart, hug your belly in tight, shift your weight to your right foot, get light on your left toes, and step that left foot back to your crescent lunge. Wrap all five toes under the ground, lift the heel, reach the arms, and bend that right knee. Turning your hips and shoulders forward, lifting up through the heart. Nice work, open up to warrior two, left heel pivots to the floor. We're building strength in these legs here. Lower your elbow or hand down to your right thigh. Look towards your left shoulder, chin tucks in and down. Reach fingertips to the front, palm faces down. As your palm, fingertips reach away the palm, pivots around and down. So that releases tension in the neck and shoulders. Now that's the reason why we're doing this is we hold a lot of tension in the neck and shoulders. Reach it forward, gaze up. Reach it back, gaze down. One more time, reach it forward, gaze up. Reach it back, gaze down. Spine long, neck spine long. Turn your thumb down. Hand tucks behind your back. Reach for your right crease of your hip. Keep opening that left shoulder. 
Inhale to warrior two. Keep pulling that right sit bone under. Lengthen down through the tail. Hug that low belly up and in. Let's straighten that right leg. Reach your right arm up. Triangle pose. Lower your right hand down. Shift your hips back. Keeping that left shoulder high. Right, you can really feel where your hips and your shoulders are in space. This isn't about touching the floor. You lower your shit hand down to shin, ankle, or a block. Try not to lock out the right knee. Let the gaze stay down. This is really going to release that tension in the neck and shoulders. Oh, feels good. Right from the jawline down to the collarbone. Let's inhale. Come back up to warrior two. Bend the knee. Release the left arm. Stretch it forward to the front of the mat. Pivot to the back ball of your foot. Hands to your heart. Lean forward. Step to your chair. Stay in your legs. And stand up. Right? So again, you're feeling that nice strength and challenge around the legs. When you feel this connection of the hips and the stabilizers getting nice and strong, you're gonna you're gonna feel your walk and your stride is gonna is gonna feel better, right? Alright, so one more sequence here, standing sequence, before we hit the floor. Uh, step your feet wide, coming into star pose. Slow, toes are slightly turning out arms reaching up. So just like a big star, really spread yourself out. Spread your fingertips out. Spread them nice and wide. We're going to bend the elbows, bend the knees. Keep reaching the knees out over the pinky edge of the toes. Just do your best. All right. Inhale as you reach up. Exhale coming down. I want you to feel the full foot, the whole four corners of the feet. I always talk about the four corners of the feet pressing down to the floor. Try not to grip the toes. Exhaling as you come down, inhaling as you come up. Last one, we're gonna come down. We're gonna stay here. Keep reaching those knees out over the toes. Elbow, right elbow over left. You can twist the arms up like a vine. Lift the elbows in front of your shoulders. If you can't do this, you can always grab for opposite shoulder blades. Your choice. Here's where we just pause for a moment and just connect with our breath. Use the breath to support you. Maybe taking a deep inhale through the nose. Slow exhale out the mouth. Relax the jaw, the throat, and the lips. Okay, let's press up. Release the arms, hands to hips. Pivot the toes. So the toes are very slightly turning in. Not too much, just a teeny bit. Inhale, lift your chest. You can push on that low back to slightly little baby back bend. And then hinging right from the hips. Bend the knees a little here as you lower your hands down to the floor or a block. Releasing your crown of your head nice and slow. Shake your head out a little yes. A little no. Kind of just wiggle and release. Doing any movements that you need to to release any tension that can sometimes really build up in the body. All right, let's go ahead. We gotta do the second side. So bend your knees, let the toes pivot out. One hand to each knee. Lift your gaze, sumo squat. Press through your feet and come up. Star pose, arms out. Fingers wide. Exhale, bend the elbows, bend the knees. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, come low. Inhale, come up. Imagine you're sliding your back against the wall. Try not to tip forward, lean forward, or stick your butt back to compensate. Last one, we hold it. Left arm over right. Your choice to twist or reach for opposite shoulders. And wherever you are, lift the elbows in front of the shoulders, getting that nice space along the back of the neck and shoulders. I love this eagle arm position. It really releases tension along my neck and shoulders. It's a good way to break up your work day if you're sitting at a desk or standing a lot just to kind of take a deep breath and stretch it out like this. All right, let's go ahead and slowly come up. Release those arms out and down. Hands to your hips. Pivot the toes forward or slightly in. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, fold. Release your fingertips to the floor. Option here, if you like, you can interlace your hands behind your back, stretch your knuckles towards the front of the mat. Again, head heavy. You can do whatever feels good for your body just to release, to let go. And then we'll all bring our fingertips to the floor. We're gonna swivel a little side to side here, coming into some lateral stretching here. So it's up to you how low you go. You can go super low if you like. You might even lift the toe of the straight leg. 
right? Kind of slither side to side. You should be feeling a good stretch on those inner groin muscles. You shouldn't feel this in the pubic bone, right? Because this is a vulnerable place. You don't want to feel it in your knees, your ankles. So again, no stretching in the joints. I want you to feel stretching in those bigger muscle groups, right? You know, your inner thigh, your quads, your hamstrings, your uh, um, calf muscles, all those are really tight because they're doing extra work to stabilize the joints, right? So you probably don't feel that flexible right now, okay, right? Let's go ahead and come back to the center. As you come back to the center, just straightening your legs, get your hands underneath your shoulders, either on the tips of your fingers. Some of you might use a block. We'll do a little twist. You're going to reach your right arm up, reach up, look up. That feels good. Place that right hand under your shoulder, second side. You can reach that left arm up. One more time to each side. All right, we often read no twisting when you're pregnant, but you know these open twists are good to do. We want to keep the spine supple. We want to keep it moving. All right, so finishing, reaching your left arm. Take it slow. Find your sumo squat. Bend your knees. Pivot your toes out. One hand to each thigh. Lift your gaze forward, press through your feet, come all the way up. Now let's toe, heel, toe, heel, our feet all the way back together. Feels good to have those feet underneath you. Turn towards the front of the mat, take your hands to your sacrum. Your sacrum is right at the lower back here. This is where that, that joint is and that and the, that hooks those, those hips in. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lift your right knee up. I call this the slow marching. Lift the left knee up. One more time to each side. Try not to shift all your weight over. Try to pause for a moment at the top, feeling that balance. All right, you finish with that left side. Bring both feet to the ground. Now step your feet a little wider than hip width apart, toes slightly turning out for your traditional squat here. So hips back, chest up, stand up and squeeze. All right, we feel that nice even pressure through both of our feet. We're nice and warmed up. Let's go ahead and come into a nice low squat. First, we'll slow her here, then lower your fingertips to the floor, and then wiggle down. And turn to face you here. So option here, you can do your squat, you know, without a block, or if you want to add a block, I like to take the block so it's right underneath my sit bones. Elbows can hook to the inside, palms together, crown your head reaching up. So we come into this deeper squat. This is oftentimes, you know, how we visualize like the perfect um, birthing position. And it is a good position to be in. However, it's not super easy. And that's why, you know, it's good to not let yourself get stuck on one idea. It's good to visualize yourself there, but at the same time, not be stuck on that being where you're going to be. All right? Because as you can feel, it does, like I said, take a bit of effort. For some people, it's super easy. Again, finding support can be most helpful. Because when you're laboring, you are trying to relax for about 80% of your labor. Right? And then the last, you know, 10% of your labor is when the action happens and you start to push and use those muscles. Alright, we're going to slowly release the hands down towards the floor and then we're going to step it back towards downward facing dog pose and just wiggle it out a little bit. And then slowly lower down towards your knee. And then we're going to come into child's pose. Let your knees open a little wider than hips width apart. Draw your big toes together. Sink your hips back. And release your forehead down towards the ground. Begin to surrender, to let go of effort and trying. And just observe, observe what happens when you relax the muscles around your belly and you relax the muscles around your jaw by letting your teeth separate. And just let the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth. 
when we relax the muscles of our jaw, it is the mirror to our pelvic floor. Now let's slowly come up. We can bring those legs out to the side. We're gonna to come to sit back. I'm gonna to turn to face y'all. So you can sit with in this another, yet yeah, another version of squat with your feet of nice and wide, toes slightly turned out, and you just get your hands back behind you. And we're gonna rock the knees like windshield wipers side to side. All right, let's get a release the hips. Noticing how it feels as you reach the knee towards the middle, the midline, there's that internal rotation of your hips, or of your femurs and your hips. Yeah, and we'll slow some of that movement down and we'll draw the soles of the feet together. Knees nice and wide, lifting up through the crown of the head. Take a deep inhale and exhale as you fold forward. Now I forgot to mention, for some of you, as, uh, if you're like me, I'm very petite, you might not be able to see that on camera, but my babies grew and took up all the space, all the little bit of space I had in my torso. So my ribs were always digging down into my baby. So I just really liked more of this open approach. And that might be something that works better for you. Sometimes, you know, in that last trimester or last few weeks, this can feel better. All right, and now we're gonna get ready for a little final relaxation. And um, if you're in the first trimester, you might be feeling fine laying flat on your back, so take advantage of that time. And as baby grows, uh, laying on your side can be a better option. Or in yoga, we like in my in yoga we have props that can help lift you up like a bolster and create a little bit of an angle to get your chest a little bit higher than your um, than your heart. So you, you can uh, explore whatever options work for you um, at home. If you're at your home practice, you can see I'm right next to my own bed. I like to put my legs up on my bed just to get the blood flow to release down. And you can do that with that lifted recliner as well. So I'm just gonna kind of show you with a couple of my basic pillows. This could probably be the most important part of uh, the practice and you're gonna see I kind of just kind of stack I've got two of my regular pillows. I'm gonna create a little space for my bottom So sometimes I like to start kind of sideways here and then I've got my pillow set up and now I'm gonna get ready to lay back Adjust it so that you get that full support from your low back to your upper back and now here you can see I'm a little bit higher You know, you can always create more height uh, as well, um, but by getting creative with the pillows and even the blocks. So at, once you get yourself set up, take a moment to reconnect with your breath, taking an inhale through the nose and a slow exhale with a sigh out your mouth. <sighs> Relaxing the jaw. And deep inhale through the nose. Slow exhale out the mouth. Soften your tongue. Begin to relax all the features of your face. And then just simply let go of your breath. Let go of controlling the breath and allow your breath to do whatever it does naturally. And just observe watch, with curiosity, and allow the muscles down along the back of the neck and shoulders to release, letting go of tension. Allow the arms to become heavy. Surrender to the earth. Observe the thoughts as they come and go. Without 
getting caught up in any of its thoughts, stories, or to-do lists. Just noticing the thought and letting the thought go. Continue to release tension, allowing your mind to scan the body. Releasing tension all the way down through the legs. Down through the soles of the feet and tips of the toes. When you begin to feel your whole body is relaxed and at ease, and as you lay here, you imagine your baby all snuggled up inside you. Listening to all the interesting sounds of your heart beating, your blood pumping, and your breath moving. And your baby is so relaxed because you are so relaxed. Stay here in this place of relaxation as long as you like. Well, for now, I'd like to salute to the light within you, the light within your baby, and the light within your growing family. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.